क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन वी हैव अ ग्राफ गिवन फर्स्ट मीन अटेंटिवनेस कोज बाई लीव टाइम कंडीशन द एक्स एक्सेस ऑफ द ग्राफ एज द फर्स्ट सेकेंड थर्ड टेस्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एज द लेबल एंड द वाई एक्सेस एज द मेन टेस्ट स्कोर दैट इज हाइर स्कोर इंडिकेट ग्रेटर अटेंटिवनेस एंड द अटेंटिवनेस इज गोइंग फ्रॉम जीरो टू सिक्स हंड्रेड The question: What does it say? It says to investigate potential cognitive benefits of taking leave from work. Psychologists Jan Packer and colleagues conducted a six-month study of Australian university staff members who took no leave from work during the study. Took two to four days of leave or took one to five weeks of leave. Tests of attentiveness were administered to participants three times during the study. At random for the no leave staff and for the rest one week before they leave one week following their return to work and one week after the second test administration after analyzing the results the researchers concluded that longer leave times might not confer a greater cognitive benefit than shorter leave times do so which choice best describes data from the graph that support the researchers conclusion is it a In the second test administration participants who took 2 to 4 days of leave had higher average attentiveness scores than did those who took no leave but in the third test administration those who took no leave had higher average scores than those who took 1 to 5 weeks of leave B in the first test administration participants who took 2 to 4 days of leave had lower average attentiveness scores Then did those who took one to five weeks of leave and those who took no leave. C. In both the second and third test administrations, participants who took two to four days of leave had higher average attentiveness scores than did participants who took one to five weeks of leave. Or D. In the second and third test administrations, participants who took two to four days of leave had higher average attentiveness. scores than did those who took no leave so to find the answer what we have to focus on is the researchers conclusion the researchers conclusion is related to longer leave times might not confer a greater cognitive benefit than shorter leave times do so we have to focus on longer leave times as compared to shorter leave times in answer choice a it is talking about 2 to 4 days of leave had higher average attentiveness than those who took no leave and the researchers are not comparing that their, con- their conclusion is not related to those who took no leave not related to that and the other part of the answer those who took no leave had higher average scores than those who took 1 to 5 weeks of leave so if you observe what is mentioned is correct in answer choice a but it is not related to what the researchers have concluded for example 2 to 4 days of leave in the second administration so this one they are comparing to no leave this one they are comparing to no leave so yeah it is higher that is correct and then they are comparing third administration those who took no leave they are comparing to those who took 1 to 5 weeks of leave so the problem here is that neither of these findings has a direct bearing on the researchers conclusion which concerns a comparison of participants who took 2 to 4 days of leave with those who took 1 to 5 and choice b is incorrect so choice b here it is talking about participants who took 2 to 4 days of leave and those who took no leave so first test administration we will observe so you can see this is lower and this is higher first test what we observe is that those who took 2 to 4 days of leave they are having less attentiveness scores than both 1 to 5 weeks of leave as well as those who took no leave so choice b is incorrect because although the graph does show that in the first test administration participants who took 2 to 4 days of leave had lower average attentiveness scores than those who took 1 to 5 days of leave and those who took no leave this test administration occurred before any participants went on leave so these results will have again no bearing on the researchers conclusion about how the amount of leave taken by participants affected their cognitive functioning because the first test has been taken the test of ad- attentiveness were administered to participants three times during the study at random for the no leave staff and for the rest one week before they leave okay so one week before they leave that was the first test so if they have not gone on leave so we cannot conclude with that data at all so b therefore is not correct so choice c is the best answer here 
This is the best answer because it describes data from the graph that support Jan Packer and colleagues' conclusion about the effect of leave time on the attentiveness of university employees. So, according to the text, researchers' study design included a group of employees who took no leave, a group who took two to four days of leave, and a group who took one to five weeks of leave. So that means two to four days is the shorter leave, and one to five weeks is the longer leave. And their conclusion is that. the longer leave times might not confer a greater cognitive benefit than shorter leave times the participants who took leave were tested for attentiveness one week before their leave that is the first test is not even when they have even gone for the leave yet okay so that is the first test administration one week after the return to work that is the second test and two weeks after the return that is the third test administration so the participants who took no leave were tested three times at random and the graph shows that at one week after the return to work participants who took only 2 to 4 days of leave had an average attentiveness score between so you observe that this 2 uh, to 4 day leave that is a shorter leave it is greater than those who have taken the longer leave 1 uh, to 5 weeks and even the third test when it is done this is higher than the one who have than the ones who have taken the longer leave 1 to 5 weeks so the participants who took leave the graph shows that one week after the return to work participants who took only 2 to 4 days of leave had an average attentiveness scores between 540 and 600 while participants who took 1 to 5 weeks of leave had an average score between 480 and 540 at 2 weeks after the return to work those who took only 2 to 4 days of leave had an average score between 480 and 540 while those who took 1 to 5 weeks of leave had an average score of approximately 480 So in other words the graph shows that on both post leave testing dates participants with longer leave times had lower average attentiveness scores than those with shorter leave times so since attentiveness is an indicator of cognitive functioning these data confirm packer and colleagues conclusion that longer leave times might not confer a greater cognitive benefit than shorter leave times do So choice D is incorrect because although the graph does show that in the second and third test now we are focusing on the second and third test administration administrations participants who took 2 to 4 days of leave had higher average attentiveness than those who took no leave now in this one we are comparing the shorter leave time to those people who took no leave but the researchers conclusion is about the effects of short leave compared with the effects of long leave not the effects of short leave compared with the effects of no leave so no leave is not what the researchers are concluding about they are only concluding about short leave with respect to long leave that is the comparison so choice d the results are irrelevant to the conclusion so that's why choice d is not correct so i hope that's clear